Hello everyone, it's episode 2 of my chess.com rapid rating climb series. I'm literally just trying to get as high of an elo as I can. Elos will be edited in because for some reason they don't show when you're in focus mode. So I don't actually know what my opponent's elo is. But we start off with a caro. Knight f3 is a bit inaccurate. It's, it's nothing major, but it's a bit inaccurate because it can allow a pin here. It's better to develop to e2 so that this isn't really a pin. But c4, okay. We're transposing to a pan of. I'm going to develop my knight because I want to take back with the knight rather than the queen. Because if takes and queen takes, knight c3 will come with tempo. And here, the main move is bishop g4. But after some various like takes, takes, bishop b5 stuff, it gets a bit messy, even though it's technically the best. So I'm going to go e6 to avoid that. Just strengthen my grip on d5, because if he ever takes, this d-pawn is going to become isolated. And so control of the square in front of the isolated pawn is very important. We go d6. We can go e7. I think e7 makes more sense, just because this pin could be annoying. That's castle. I want to go a6. Hmm. Do I need a6? Yeah, I'd like to put my queen on c7, maybe. Um, being kettoing also looks viable. Uh, we could do this. But I don't think we're going to be able to hold on to the pawn. So let's Fianchetto. H3 doesn't really do anything. I mean, it's a fine enough move, of course, but it's, it's nothing to be concerned about. Bishop b7. You know, when this knight moves, it's an extra defender of d5. It's an odd move. Because bishop f4 makes me question why he played b3. Let's let's go rook c8. My queen doesn't have an easy square though. She can no longer go to c7 because of the bishop. Hmm. Kind of tempting. Queen moves. Ooh. Yeah, that's nice. That is nice. Pin setting up knight e4. The best move might be to drop the bishop back. To defend and break the pin at the same time. Because the knight's undefended. And like I said, <clears throat> someone like queen c2. Yeah, might walk into knight e4. So here we could actually trade and take with the knight. like queen f6 I don't know I feel like we might be able to do better than that so let me think we could just take and then it doesn't matter what he takes with we're going to win the d4 pawn and our bishop's going to open up Am I missing anything? I don't think so. And what's good is that um, this knight can always take that knight with check to avoid any funny business. Not that I think there is any. Yeah, wow, okay. Whoa. He's really going to do this? I guess his point is that after there, 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 he can take with the rook. To avoid bishop takes and then trading the queens because he has a pawn down. But I'm more than happy to double your pawns, my good sir. More than happy. How to proceed? It's not easy. This move, I kind of want to play. I also don't want to take the... 
Bishop c5 might be quite good. Hmm. Okay, I, I can I can use a bit of time here. There's no increment, it's just 10 minutes straight, so I can't be too um, liberal with my use of time, but I think this is an important moment. Hmm. I'm kind of leaning towards this. I want to play this to get the rook to move. And get my bishop off of the diagonal, because... I want to trade. I, I, I just want to trade. But my issue before was that... You know, there'd be an attack on the bishop when it was on b4. Really? Why is he trading everything? We have the more active pieces. And we're up a pawn. And his pawn structure is ruined. Okay, this is just an admission of defeat, surely. What? Okay, we're not going to get a better opportunity to trade queens. I guess he's coming in here, but it doesn't matter. I don't think it matters. Um, let's try and be accurate. Let's try and be accurate. I'm gonna go king f8, rook d7, a5. Our bishop covers any check on d6, and our bishop's kind of untouchable. And if we have some. What? What about this? This, this? But if we just go king e8, king e8 now defends d7 and steps off of this check. So this is now a threat to trade more pieces. And if it was simply, yeah, we're going to do this. If it was simply I was up a pawn in a rook end game, I would be a bit concerned about my winning chances. But the problem is. That his rook just isn't good. Well, no, his, his rook's okay. His rook's okay. But, so if I go rook c2, rook a4, a5, b4, not a fan. But the problem is these pawns. I don't believe he can hold with them. I'm tempted to go b5 to cut off the option of rook a4 so I can infiltrate. Looks logical. If he goes a4, probably a good move. I can go a6 and then meet. So if a4, a6 takes, takes, rook b4, I can go rook c5. I like that. I like that. Okay, that doesn't really do anything. Just go h6, keep the pawn intact. Yeah, rook b4. Let's go a6, as planned. Mm -hmm. I like that our rook monitors the fifth rank, so any kind of attacks can be met with my rook swinging over. I don't want to take because it gives his rook an open file. So let's bring the king. This check isn't scary. We can just block.
check the there. Or maybe I just bring the king first. Let's bring the king just to keep this pawn completely, completely safe. No need to risk anything. There's never a check on c4 because our pawn always covers it because I'd like to move the rook. Hmm. Okay. But what if we go to h5? Rook h5, rook, rook h5, rook f4. F5? Or even f Yeah, f5. Because then it stops rook g4. If he goes rook g4. Okay, we trade first. Cool. Again, we keep an eye on these squares that black white could use to infiltrate. This I don't think is scary. Yeah, this I thought f5 just wins. Well, f5, h4, g4 takes takes. Hmm. f5, h4, what about e5? The rook has no more squares except for b4 to keep an eye on the pawn and then king c5 or f5 check, f4 check. Okay, but we've only got two minutes and there's no increment, so I'm going to have to speed up. But h4, e5, I think wins. This traps a rook. Rook's trapped. Yo, that is cool. That is very cool. And then, easy clean up. Let's, oh man, that was so awesome. We just trapped, <laughs> just trapped his rook in the middle of the board, man. Whew. That is, I mean, I'm getting excited over, like, the stupid thing when you really think about it. Like, in the grand scheme of things, this is stupid. But that's so cool, man. So cool. Um, and yeah, we'd calculated it. So, okay. That gets us up to 1728 ELO. You can actually see that now. Our opponent was rated just under 1700. So he's a good player. He's a good player. Oh, can I game review this? Will it let me? Will it let me? Yeah, so I actually had 90.9% accuracy. We made one mistake all game, which is pretty sick. Let's just fix... Well, this is the max I'm going to be able to fix this. But you can see the board at least. Just run through the game real quick. This is all book book moves. E6, yeah. Bishop G4 is the main move here, but E6 is fine. Just developing. Yeah, I didn't like Bishop D6. C5 can come with a tempo. True. It just felt a bit loose to moves like Knight B5 or Bishop G5. Computer really likes C5. Okay. So we chose which I, I, I chose a better move with bishop e7, which I think is kind of instructive. Like, the bishop doesn't need to be on the most active square necessarily, because if the bishop goes to d6, you know, it could help activate some of white's pieces. You know, it could activate the bishop, could activate the knight, could activate this pawn. So while my bishop isn't doing a whole lot, it's stopping white's pieces from doing a lot, if you get what I mean. It, my, my, my dark squared bishop isn't supposed to be doing anything major yet. We're just getting the pieces out, you know, just getting castled. So I think that's kind of instructive. Castle, b3, b6 is the best move. That's cool. That's good to know. I think I was also considering a6, which I think is the computer's second favorite move. So there we go. 
be so I could just be lying to you. You can't actually see the computer. Uh, you can just see the little um, the little numbers, and then you just gotta trust me. So that's why I'm the YouTuber, I guess. H three, yeah. It didn't seem like the right idea because I'm not getting a bishop to g four. My bishop also isn't on d six, and my queen isn't on c seven. So nothing's like attacking h two anyway. Bishop b seven, bishop f four, rook c eight. It likes knight e4. I think I did mention that move, but I wasn't really a fan of it. Um, knight a5 is a move. Just to put pressure on c4, I'd assume, with rook c8. Because it can't really advance now because my b-pawn and my bishop cover. So that's interesting. It's, it's these kind of like positional ideas within openings that like... Sometimes you just got to analyse with a computer and see what the computer likes, and it goes knight a5, and at first glance it's like, why on earth does it like knight a5? And then like, you apply some human logic. I'm I'm so ready to make a video, like, ranting about computers, by the way, because like, people give them way too much credit. Like, obviously they're better than any human, but you shouldn't just look at a computer evaluation and then be like, oh yeah, 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 that's it, boom. Computer says that that's the best move, but why? you got to figure out why. So the computer here likes knight a5. And then I've got to figure out why does it like knight a5. Okay, puts pressure on c4. But also opens up the c file. Also opens up the bishop. So maybe part of the thought behind knight a5 is so that knight e4 is even better. Because, it's, because the bishop is also covering. I think this is... Um, it's kind of like an interesting way to analyze things because you actually reveal more from the position. Because computers can often make it so that you reveal less about the position, you know? Because you just take it at face value. Sorry. I, I, I will actually make a dedicated video ranting about this at some point. Rook c8, rook e1, and yeah, it's a mistake. And bishop b4 is the best move because the problem with playing b3 is it relinquishes defense of the knight and the rook on e1 if it weren't for this move it'd probably be a fine move but this is dangerous and what i was saying with moves like queen c2 oh actually taking here and then winning the pawn i was thinking initially of knight e4 Ah, okay, so this is the idea. And then knight d6. Okay. I was wrong. I was wrong. The computer is right. I missed that. Um, Had my opponent played queen c2, I hope I would have looked into it a bit harder. I probably would have, but... the This position in general just looked dubious. Bishop d2 is good. Queen d3 is apparently the best. And then again, it really wants knight a5 going after c4. You can also trade on c4 and then go knight a5. Wow, I didn't know this knight a5 thing was so important. It's really good to know because I guarantee I will play that in a game in the future. And it will be really, really good. Interesting. So, that didn't happen. Bishop d2 made sense, but yeah, it just fails to d takes c4. Bishop takes, knight takes. I expected knight e5 here, trying to avoid a trade of knights. And this moves like knight d7? That's kind of hard to play, because it relinquishes defense of the knight. Queen e7? Strange move. Bishop d6 makes sense. I guess White's point is that he actually has a good bit of pressure on e6. So the knight could sacrifice itself on f7. Then the knight covers e6. So if this bishop ever moves, this knight hangs. So this knight isn't really in danger. But rook c1, yeah, that just... 
It's a horrible move because as we saw later on in the game, the H pawn became a big problem for my opponent. Because normally you'd be able to leave like I did. I just left my kingside pawns and brought my king over to the queen side to help out. But when my opponent tried to do the same thing, these pawns were too weak and my rook was able to exploit them and force my opponent's rook to get trapped in the process. So that's interesting. Like, the computer literally gives another two, almost, yeah, yeah, another two points of advantage just because that pawn structure gets ruined. So here, it prefers queen d4. I did look at that move. I rejected it because the queen I thought the queen could move and there could be some kind of like bishop e3 and then I just get kicked out. But this I can probably just go to h4. I can go to e5. That's a strange square. h4. And I guess there's just so much pressure building. It makes sense. But I quite liked my bishop a3 idea. Because I could play knight d5. And I lose I, I lose like a point of advantage. But I also don't care that much. Because I'm very confident I can convert this endgame. Especially once I trade queens. I'm down to actually only one point of advantage, well, one and a half points of advantage. Here I expected rook d7, and I was going to go a5, and then if the rook continued to attack, I was thinking about playing bishop. Oh wow, there's bishop c7. So I've got to just infiltrate, and if takes, takes, what? Well, I nearly kind of threw the game. I guess. But my opponent goes rook d2, and I thought that was too passive, because, yeah, king e8. I didn't go to e7 just because it's a dark square, and my opponent's got a dark square bishop, so why why, why allow anything? Um, yeah, I liked this, trading, b5. Mm-hmm. Rook c5. And you see this a lot in high-level games, where the rooks step on to like a rank where it's it's not the second rank or the first rank, which is like the typical places to go. Like my rook isn't even looking at any oppose, opposing pawns, but it's doing a great job of like having opportunities to swing around to any square on the rank and pose problems. So I quite liked that. King f4 was odd. I actually could play rook h5 here. I'm also threatening to pick up the rook with this, but then the king just goes back. And, I don't know. Whoa. Apologies for the voice break. King c6 is better. King e3, rook h5. Here I expected h4. f5. And then you've got ideas of like g5 takes and rook takes to get a passed pawn. So there's that. But it's very tough to play with white. And he trades and plays rook f4. And yeah, f5 is just really, really good because you're threatening to trap the rook. <laughs> and here you can go rook d4 and give up the h pawn. But. There's no info. There's, there's no good infiltration squares. Like this is going to be way too strong. I can just push the g pawn even. If the rook goes to e8, I can even step across, or I can just continue pushing. And I'm actually just going to win the f pawn as well because it's pinned. But yeah, it's it's very hopeless at this point, and that just gives up a rook. The rest of the game is self-explanatory. Um, I'm very happy with it. I missed a few things in the middle game, sure. But, you know, above 90% accuracy is not bad for a 10-minute blitz game. Well, rapid, technically, actually. Um, but with no increment, it kind of feels like blitz sometimes, because you can get some mad time scrambles. But 
anyways i hope you guys enjoyed the video a nice little win in the car Khan, because you know it's the goat opening it's just the goat and if you're not playing it then go check out the car Khan videos on my channel i don't care that i'm self-promoting it's a sick opening and i've made sick videos on it you know very very, very top-notch production quality and all that so check them out if you're interested hope you enjoyed and i'll see you in the next video